commence throwing the panties on stage now. <laughs> never have a work. <laughs> because when you tell somebody you're from Maine, you get that same reaction every single time that they're like, oh, I think you just had sex and like, you have Ebola. But there, there are so many misconceptions about what it is to be a man out there that I, I kind of wanted to address first off. Like, um, everyone's surprised when they know that like I've never, I don't know, like killed a fucking bear. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that I have teeth surprises them. <laughs> that I've never fished for lobster, I don't even like lobster. And I think that like, people just get this image of my childhood being like the shittiest fucking childhood you could have. <laughs> like, I was, like I was like, like hanging for pennies from like passengers back to the bigger cities, like playing in the fucking dirt. <laughs> like we don't have roads, we don't have water, we don't have power. It's like the, the state that time forgot. <laughs> for some reason they don't they don't get that like no we're we're getting we're part of the union too. Like, send us some government money. <laughs> but there's like it was great growing up in Maine. It was like it's a nice place to live, it's a nice place to be. There's plenty of shit that we're proud of, like uh, our TV newscasters. The state TV newscasters are the best in the fucking world. And I don't care if like, there are people from like, New York, like, ooh, yeah, New York dude, like, tons of shit to talk about, but fuck you. And if there's like, people from LA, like, LA news is like, oh, they're shooting today. Oh, the news team is on it. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Because like, shit happens in your states that like doesn't happen in mine. So, like, your newscasters actually have shit they can talk about. <laughs> mine have to sit there and be like, <laughs> Why did I come to Maine? <laughs> Fuck me! So they get, when it comes up and it's like at, at six o'clock, like God, come hell or, or high water, the fucking news show has to go on. So they're like, "Fuck, let's just take whatever we have. Go with the segment we had last week." And it ends up being like, you know, the worst shit you can imagine that they just polish with their newscaster skills because they're all just so full of shit, and they just play it anyway. So you end up getting like. News team 13 continues motorist mayhem. It's like the, <laughs> the camera guy and the camera running after cars for rolling through a stop sign. <laughs> you get these rich guys in Lexus. They're just like, you know, people idling too long. Like, get him! Get him! Get the fucking boom! Get the camera out there! Go after that guy. <laughs> this guy's evil when he wants to be stopped. <laughs> or like, you know, you get even dumber shit like, we continue our coverage of bad apples. <laughs> Middle school students in detention. It's like shit that no one gives a fuck about. <laughs> Everybody was in detention when they were in middle school. It's just like what you drew on a wall. And suddenly, like, helicopters outside with like a fucking shaky camera. Like, there's been a shooting or something. And then, like, those are the best days and the worst days. My guys can come through and there's nothing. Nothing to cover. I'm just like fucking seriously, nothing happened to me. <laughs> who's who's cooking at the chili cook-off? <laughs> Guess who's buying the chili back? They'll do anything they can. They'll put that little newscaster voice into it, and suddenly it's fucking gold. <laughs> so I'm proud of my newscasters, and I'm proud also of my used car dealership commercials. Not for the bad acting, and by bad acting I mean great acting, because like. I should you not, I think De Niro and Pacino both got their start for row four in Portland, Maine. It's highly demanding. Uh, but not, not for the acting, for the, for the music that they write for this fucking band. I think like every old rock band you could imagine just moves to Maine with them. Kind of like old people move to Florida. They all migrate up to Maine and then they write songs for car dealerships. And it's like they still think they got that flair, so you can like, eh.
fucking missing out on like a main staple. So like, for any of you who actually do go to main ever, like, who am I talking to? Like, <laughs> good picture anyway. If any of you go to main, just the best thing you can do is just sit down and fucking watch TV and keep the channels below six. <laughs> just keep them below six, you'll be entertained for as long as you're fucking. Okay. So those are good things about me. It's not all, it's not all like cattle tending and farming. Fuck, a lot of those. <laughs> cattle tending and farming, like hillbilly people and like fucking yokels, like running around with like, pickup trucks with like their dogs running in the way, and, like, dust everywhere and fucking body. <laughs> it's not. Like, But, but these people exist in every state, in every single state, I don't care how blue it is or it's going to be in November. <laughs> I don't care how fucking blue it is, in every single state there's at least one household with a, with a confederate flag flying. There's at least one. And like sometimes they're hard to find because you gotta like walk three days to the mountains to get to them. <laughs> but these people are in every single state, it's like your state's dirty secret. And I don't mean like, I don't mean people that just enjoy the taste of squirrel and Shit. That's fine. Like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do your thing. But that's fine. I'm talking about like intolerant people that that like hate everyone else, but like praise their own ethnicity, and they don't even know what it means. Like these kind of people, and they're they're everywhere. But the, the good thing about them is they're so kind of tucked away under rocks, like throughout the country, that you don't really often get to see them. And so, but they leave you reminders. They, they leave you little reminders. That they exist. And I've, I've got a little reminder. I'm going to show it. Hold on. I hand this out, and you are going to pass it around. Because it's way too small. <laughs> now, some context. I was at a Starbucks. Yes, it's Starbucks. <laughs> getting, getting a coffee, and I was going to pay for it. It was about $1.50. I had $2 bills, and one of them turns out to be a Nazi dollar bill. <laughs> a dollar bill to face by Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't, you can't see it from here, so I'm going to pass it around. Down there. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say read it, I said pass around. <laughs> no, but you can actually read it. Just very quickly. No. Why aren't you fucking pocketing it? Like, I give you a dollar. <laughs> I say pass it around, but like, you can go to Wendy's and get like a five piece chicken nugget meal and fucking. <laughs> Gas prices go up and you're actually passing around a dollar bill. <laughs> this must be Wesley. <laughs> Everyone's gotta see the dollar bill when they're faced by the Nazis. <laughs> That's cool though. That's cool. So anyway, I'm in line. I have the dollar bill. I'm about to give it to the cashier and I see the swastika. Fuck! I can't give this to the guy. No. <laughs> oh shit. The Nazis win. <laughs> Shutting down our economy one dollar bill at a time. <laughs> <laughs> 